<laughs> so tomorrow night from 7 o'clock till 10 o'clock at night, in folks, music, dancing, magicians. Just for NYU students, okay? Just for, but please take care of each other. Take care of each other, okay? We love you. So I just want to ask this one person or two people. Like, if you, if, like, you could have gone home, right? Yeah. Like, where's yeah. home? Oh, actually, I couldn't have gone home. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked the wrong person. So, uh, where are you from? Why not? I'm from Hong Kong, so it's on the other side of the world. Yeah. You can't even call home. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who, who could have gone home here? Like, where's home? Uh, so here, you could have gone home, but you stayed because you wanted to have the experience. You wanted to volunteer. And who, um, who else, who lives, like, really close to New York, you could have gone home? The Brent. And you, and you, and you, where's home? Uh, Washington Place. So you have a home right around the corner, and you're staying here. You really, is, there like, is there a girl involved? Is something? Wait, wait, this is NYU. We don't go to that kind of gender. No, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, how many people here are in the drama program? Film. Like four of us. But but and who, who else is someone that could have gone? Like they, they could have gone home. Like home had power. Washington Place has no power, right? right so there's no Not point you going. But who could have gone? Home? Where's home? New Jersey. And, you, and they have power and everything there. They probably do. Probably. Yeah. I haven't called well, home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious for the ones who stayed. Why? The building I live in, which is near here, we had to, um, not had to, we volunteered everybody in the building to bring food and prescriptions and like go off and get and up and house and supplies for the elderly people who live in the building. We know a lot of elderly people, both elevators are out, they can't walk up and down, they can't walk up the flights of stairs, they can't walk their dogs. So people in the building are taking turns walking their dogs, getting, their, getting food for their dogs. Laundry taken care of if that's what's required. I can take care of other people in the building, but uh, in my lifetime, this is like unprecedented. I understand it. This is uh, you know, New York is, we might as well be living in like, I don't want to name a country, a pretty scorching country. Yeah, yeah. It's probably represented on you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, nowadays, yeah. But, uh, it's, I can't believe how, how New Yorkers deal with third world conditions when they come on this organization. Like, it's pretty strange. Can I just say something? Yes. I, I realize you folks, you, you, you had, maybe when you're here, you have your computers, but it, you should be very, very proud. Yesterday at his press conference, President Obama singled out as, as the heroes of the New York calamity the folks at NYU Medical Center, the Angola Medical Center. And there were pictures of them carrying babies and oxygen from, from the intensive care unit, patients, huge patients brought down 16 flights of stairs, and today he call, called over to the hospital and uh, spoke to the nurses in the cancer unit because the cancer patients had to be taken out and so forth. Uh, and this is the spirit that you people have that makes people like me That's very say cool. it's worth our lives. Very cool. yeah. now, now, by the way, everybody here seems like fully engaged in something they're doing or each other. However, you are very relaxed in the the other thing is I'm an RA and I haven't got much sleep over you're the past couple of days, so I'm kind of taking you too, you're an RA. I want to say something about uh, NYU actually. Um, I'm from New Orleans and I, I was in New Orleans uh, during and after Katrina. And I think the response that NYU has been given after this has been phenomenal. I think NYU has done an incredible job. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Well, let me just... Woo!
course, most of you know it if you're in dorms that are without power, is that certain things just start happening unavoidably, like you can't pump the water for the toilets and, and so forth and so on. So people are going to get a little more cranky. Not, I, not I hope, people here. But um, New York is pretty good about being resilient, but they're not going to be on that. But I, I, it's not going to be back. We're not going to have power until Monday, probably. Because uh, they're telling us our cogent keeping this building and others. And I'm going to put a plug in here, by the way. Okay. You've heard a lot about NYU Plan 2031, which was a 25-year plan began in 2006. The first project we did, which was very controversial and opposed and so forth, was the Cogen Plan that's keeping this building and the other buildings open. And we wouldn't have any power if it weren't, if it weren't for that. Uh, but uh, our Cogen Plan will be the first to get power ironically, because it is a high need, and they're telling us Saturday for that. And by the time they get to the apartments and so forth, they're going to clean up front. So it's not going to be normal. I, we'll have class at Monday, I'm pretty sure. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, I, I was telling Alex, one of the, one of the things that we made, the decision we made that, that I think was a good one, was announcing to you yesterday, no class till Monday, is that 75% of our students have gone home. So this crowd is four times as much as one of This man, I want you to know before we get to the building, uh, I've been privileged to know him for a good number of years now. Now he's kind of become a member of my family because a close friend of his is marrying my daughter. Uh, his wedding took place in this room. We're very proud of that. While you're here, just go with it. Romance is in the air. But he, is, he has been, any time that we have asked him to do anything for the school, and, and, and I had Eric, my daughter's fiance, ask him this morning, and he, he dropped everything to see to be here just to say to you folks, stick with him. So thank you. Eric, his future son-in-law is Tina Faye's producing partner, and he came to me this morning because we were shooting this TV show this morning out in Queens, and he came to me and he goes, i got to talk to him. And I thought, oh, God, he's going to be terrible to He goes, sex that needs you to come to Kimmel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to tell me. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo!